We're at Open Sauce, running around, time to figure out what's going on here. We're gonna start going through a couple of things here. Let me know if you can hear me. Come on in the room, say hey. We got a lot of people here today. I can see me starting out at Cookie Cad one more time. Um, we're about three hours from this thing shutting down. So I wanted to run through and just kind of get through here what we can and just make sure that everybody gets a chance to see what's going on Skyward. How are you doing? Good to see you. We are here at Open Sauce in San Francisco. Brady Meets World, how are you? Come on in guys, say hello. Shirley, how are you doing? Good to see you. Um, let me know if you can hear me. I hope everything's sounding okay. I think all my microphones are on. I think I'm seeing, yep, I'm seeing lights. Ah, things are blinking weird. Things are blinking weird. So, can y'all hear me? Let me know if you can hear me. I don't know why we're blinking weird. There. Now you should be able to hear me. How's this feeling? Is this feeling any better? You can look up at me like this. This is not my good angle. Are y'all here, guys? Can y'all hear me? I think we're doing much better now. What about y'all? Let me make sure, turn this microphone on. We are walking around open sauce today, guys. This is the second day we're doing this. I'm gonna wanna show y'all things that are going on. So I'm here at the Cookie Cad booth right now. Kinda we got our little uh, game going on right there. It's been a lot of fun. How's it going, Oxy? It's good to see you. And uh, we got a rollerblading guy. Hold on a sec, I'm gonna see if, ah, he took off before I could, could get it. We'll get him on the way back, maybe. Let's turn this camera around. Y'all say, hey, let me know what you're up to, what's going on. Uh, he stopped. We got some really cool stuff here, though, guys. Um, so if you know who Davros is, anybody a Doctor Who fan? We got Davros. It's a remote-controlled Davros. And you can sit in it, and they'll drive you around. It's a lot of fun. And that's me right there. Look at that. Look at that. That's me. This is a remote control cart, grocery cart. Look at this. All right. Hey, guys. She's got the remote control driving it. So think about that going through the grocery store. Now, are you developing an autonomous version? I am. I'm working on it. That's the goal with this. I want it to be able to follow me while I'm in the shopping cart, oh, while I'm that, shopping. That's awesome. Yeah. That thank is you. pretty awesome. No, thank you so great, much. Great, great, great. Awesome. You. Thank Have you. You too. Look at that. Hey, follow that development right over there. That's where she is, over on YouTube and Instagram, guys. So awesome, awesome, awesome. All right. Hey, how's everybody doing? Come on in. Hey, if you see me walk across something, now that's like skateboard man or something here. You're not broadcasting this, right? I am. This is live. They're, all these people walking aren't cops, right? No, 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 awesome. no, no. Welcome. We got, we got five people in here right now. It's building up slowly but surely. So. <laughs> awesome, awesome, awesome. All right, we got bumper car driving around. Now, this one doesn't need the power. See, no pole there. But how's everybody doing? Come on in, say hey. Let me know you can hear me. Let me know you know what's going on. We're here at Open Sauce, just kind of stepping through. I'm showing you the things that are here. If I'm talking to somebody and you have a question, what's up, Jazzy? How are you doing? Thank you for saying hello. Thank you for saying hello. If you see something or you have questions about somebody I'm talking to, please, please let me know. Thank you for the likes, guys. I really appreciate that. Get that heart me up there if you can while we're going. Let's get this team going, get this team growing and everything. And uh, we're gonna just start stepping through. We saw, oh, oh, here's a cool one. I'm gonna turn this around. Y'all like this. I'm gonna follow this guy for a minute. Y'all know this machine, right? He can steer and everything. Look at that. That's pretty awesome. I'm definitely enjoying myself. It's going really well. We're having a really good time. See all those little legs? Now, if you're a fan of Engine Easy or JBD Creative, he actually uh, has designed some printable parts like that. So we're going to step on through. We got Cookie Cat, Jim and I, Eric. How are y'all doing? What have you found interesting here? Um, something I think is really cool is that uh, SLS printer. Yes, the micro, oh, yes. micro. The um, micron. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. That, that's a really cool one. I, I saw that yesterday. They printed a part for 
Did they? Oh, and the awesome. uh, Positron. The Positrons. The Positrons are awesome. It's always fun. Yeah. It's always fun. That's great. Oh, wow. So Mitch 3D, part of his... I don't have to scream anymore. Sorry. Mitch 3D, part of his backpack printer broke, so he asked them to print a new part, and they okay. just dropped it off. Oh, hi, Oxy. <laughs> so... They awesome. just dropped off this piece That's for his great. backpack printer. Yeah, for his backpack printer. He was having some issues. Yeah, these shows are amazing because people will be like, oh, this thing happened to my thing. Can you help me out? Like, someone needed a QR code, so we 3D printed it for their booth. <laughs> so awesome. now they have, like, a way of people connecting awesome. to their shop. Awesome, awesome. Well, thank you. Yeah. And your booth is going well. Y'all yeah, got the world's first well. filament. Vending machine is yes, what I'm seeing step here. Step right up and buy your cookie cat filament uh -huh. or your little fidget toys. We got some dragons. We got some fidget cubes. So, and what are we talking about? Talk about like 50 milligrams? What? Yeah. What, uh, okay. Awesome. 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 50. Now, is this going to kind of become a show standard? Uh, we'll definitely have it at Earth. Okay. So if you're there. Awesome. Or 3D Printopia, you mean? Earthtopia. <laughs> <laughs> yes. That's awesome. We'll awesome. be at 3D Printopia one way or another okay. with our vending machine. How's your CAD software going right now? I know Nathan's oh, been developing. Oh, it's going really well. Is it? Awesome. Do you, you want a actually demo? got a little screen over here with it on. Do they want a demo? Real quick. Are they sure. getting a demo They're whether getting... they ask for it or not? Yeah, definitely. They might have questions. All right, here we go. So you can do here or there. I, I guess here you see my yeah, fingers. Yeah, I see your finger. All right, so let's see. Let's do a line. And thank you for the likes, guys. So see, she's just drawing with her finger. And look what's happening in 3D. D or 3D space. You can add text. You can change. You can add shapes. Smash that heart button. Give us some hearts. Join the team. <laughs> That's awesome. Hey, thank you for the likes, guys. Get that heart me up there if you can. <laughs> it's right about there, right under my finger. That's awesome. Now, this is all web-based, right? This is all web-based. Okay. It is free to use. And it's at... Uh, you just go to cadit.app. Cadit cadit A-P-P. So, cadit.app. Hey, guys. Yeah. Come on in. You're on it. Awesome. Awesome, awesome, awesome. We got yeah. KTTJ Design saying he's on it. Oh, thank you. Awesome. And we're showing it off on the big screen over here. Yeah. So everyone walking by can That's be great. like, what's so going on? Her husband, Nathan, right there, that guy right there is developing this. Working with some other programmers and stuff. Oh, you're there. So. Uh, he is, yeah, he hires some programmers to do all the, okay. more of the coding because we're very busy yes. with CAD cookie cat designer and okay. our beautiful filament oh the beautiful filament if you haven't yeah, seen that. this this is our tallest tallest dragon we That's... haven't found anyone taller than this dragon yet oh my but it may happen if you're taller <laughs> than this dragon That's awesome. that is awesome you will win a pat on the back yeah yep you're right tinkercad does it and it's free and this app is free as well yeah. So, jump so on over and similar hit. to Tinkercad, but we want it to be really easy to use without trying to find in the menu what the wording is. You can just be like, I want this thing to go here, you know, and then it's there. Yeah. So it's a little and more so, intuitive, not it's yes. a little more user friendly, is what you're saying. User friendly, okay. but powerful as well. Here okay. you can work in metrics if you wanted to type things in okay okay that's awesome and you can also do like oh there you go look at that uh, we got our chamfer oh, oh no something went wrong uh -oh. ah. <laughs> you gotta ah. save it you gotta save it oh i know did you get one 
That's awesome. So, so he's been over to a couple of booths. The Hacksmith Mini Hacksmith Saber. Hacksmith Torta, yeah. right. And we got the red color because, you know, I'm a Sith Lord. Of course, of yeah. course. And then the uh, Web Slinger, the ones you were showing off yesterday. Yeah, I know. It was awesome. Had to get them. <laughs> they look good. Awesome. Thanks for sharing that. Thank yeah. you, thank you, thank you. Well, thank you for sharing. That was awesome. Yeah. And everybody on my channel knows all about Cookie Cat Filament. They see it all the time with my place. So thank you for sharing. We're going to keep walking, guys. Let me know if you have questions. Now, this guy's got an interesting invention here. He has built a little car on top of a one wheel. And so in driving it, he has the ability to move forward and backwards with using the one wheel to drag him, you know, around the world. So it's pretty cool. And he has a couple of different vehicles here that he uses to do it. So, oh, we're going to watch him drive a little bit, maybe. Bring it over to the there you go. So there you go. That's kind of cool. That's kind of cool. How's it going? How are you doing? So what am I looking at here? So what we are looking at is a drone motor powered e-bike. Uh, basically, we have the MAD 8130 motor down here. Uh, an 84 cell battery that was hand spot welded. Wow. And uh, it is a 12 by 6 series. Okay. So, very dangerous. Uh, don't do this at home, please. <laughs> uh, only at open sauce. Yeah, only at open sauce. Uh, the ESC is a shunt resistor, and then that is uh, actually capping the voltage. So, it has a really high torque. Oh, nice. But okay. it has a uh, really, really small motor. So because it is that drone motor, uh, the power to weight ratio is actually really, really high. Okay. So we have our RPM gauge here as well. And every single time that you put any throttle into it, that RPM gauge goes up. And once it gets to 90 degrees going down, then you can actually start shifting through that uh, nine-speed transmission down there at the bottom. Oh, okay. Okay, that's cool. So, yeah, it's a, it's a great passion project, and uh, it's really fun to drive. It goes 55, and I'm not going to say which because uh, for legal reasons. <laughs> yes, I understand. Yeah. I understand. Well, thank you for sharing. That's awesome. Where can they find out about you? Um, they can find out. This is... We don't actually have a website or anything. Do you have like uh, TikTok? Or, uh, uh, we're going to be starting a YouTube channel okay, soon. Okay. So awesome. uh, uh, keep awesome. uh, it's going to be Canoes Creations. Canoes Creations. But it is uh, it, it is a work in progress. Uh, hopefully, we'll okay. have it up by this year and then leading into the next. Open now, is sauce. this something you're going to make open source? Is this something that you plan on selling? Are you going to do kits? What's the idea behind it? Just, uh, it's just a passion project right now. Okay. Uh, it's going to make videos on it, and uh, we're going to see see where it goes. Uh, well, there you go, guys. Yeah, I'm just a guy helping present. Uh, it's my buddy Connor. Okay. He's the one who's the brainchild between gotcha. everything. Okay, so. well, awesome. Well, thank yeah. you for sharing. Thank yeah. you very much. Thanks you for guys showcasing have any questions, us. Let me know. If they ask you questions, I'll come back and hit you up. Perfect. All thank right. you so much. Thank you, man. You have a good day. You as well. All right, guys. We're going to keep going through here. Oh, oh, oh. We got a little bot roving around. You you gotta watch out for the bots here. They are all over the place. These bots. I know, right? How are y'all doing? Doing pretty good. Yeah, awesome, awesome. So now I saw this little guy. We there seems to be a theme of shopping carts here this year. Yeah, shopping carts. Uh, we think that they're pretty funny, goofy, and silly even. Okay. So uh, we wanted one to go uh, 30 miles an hour because that's uh, pretty fun. Turn the discharge switch on. Discharge switch on. Discharge switch on. Lift out the back. It goes pretty fast. It goes, it goes 30 miles an hour. That's pretty good. Um, we also have the jet bike here, which goes about 50 miles an hour. Okay. Yeah, and it runs off of a gallon of kerosene, and that gets eaten up in about uh, 10 minutes. Oh, wow. So it's not very fuel efficient, but it is certainly fast. And he says jet engine, guys. Yes, that is an actual an actual jet engine. 
It's about $2,500. There you go. There you go. That's pretty awesome. Yes, sir. That is pretty awesome. And this is just uh, powered with a 6S battery and two uh, vest bike controllers and two brushless motors. Okay. Now, do you ever go to the grocery store and someone drive this while you're shopping? Uh, I'm sure that would be hilarious. <laughs> However, I have not gotten the chance to. Okay. Okay. Well, I can't wait for the videos to come yes, out. Sir. Yes, How sir. How can people find out about you? Uh, so, my YouTube channel is General Ugo. That's U G. Okay. Um, and do you, you have I don't see it over here. He's, he's got nothing to plug. Okay. Uh, but okay. yeah. All right. Well, thank you, right, man. No thank you very much. Have a good one. Hey, guys, if you have any questions on this, let me know. I'll step back and we'll ask him questions if we have them. All right? We're going to keep going through here, guys. Whatever you draw, right, goes on the wall. So. They're telling anybody want me to ride anything? Anybody can ride anybody? Or draw anything. You can, I can ride or draw something and we can put it up on this amazing <laughs> wall back here. If y'all have an idea or something you want me to write, we'll put it back there. Anything. Any thoughts guys? I'll give you to the count of ten and see if y'all come up with something. Alright? We got some good hire my friend Isaac. Alright? We got some really good stuff here. I'm a junior. Front end developer. Nice. This guy owes us money. There you go. I'm liking these. These are pretty good. These are pretty good. <laughs> these are pretty good. Well, if y'all, oh, no, I can't do that one. Sorry. I, I appreciate what you're saying, but that's not where I go with this. Um, okay, here we go. Here we go. I like that one. Uh, Mud Skipper, we're doing that one. See how bad my writing is here, guys. You want to hold the phone for you while you draw? I'm good. All right. Think positive. Like a proton. <laughs> there you go, guys. Exclamation point and lots of little hearts. All right. There we go. We're going up on the wall. It's Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> now we we'll find you a home. We're finding our home over here, guys. We are officially on the wall. We are officially on the wall. There we go, guys. Thank you. That's great. How you going? Thank you. You Good too. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's look around here. Let's see what we got. We got us a different lab. No. Do you want to fry some rice? Fry some rice? Yeah, so this is Twitch Chat Fries Rice. And okay. Originally, this would connect to Twitch Chat, take commands from them, and then using that would add things to the walk, toss it, etc. It's a okay. whole rice frying robot. A rice frying robot, guys. Yeah. But this I, is like, I'm I feel like. This is like something you make in college so you can play games while you're waiting for food to be made. That's exactly right. Okay, I'm gonna let you hold that if you want to. Oh, sure okay. thing. Yeah, now if you want to try this out, okay. I've got a little control panel here for nice. you. Nice. Oh. So this lets you send the Twitch chat commands automatically. Okay. So All you right. can simulate that you're the one doing this. So are there like specific quantities of soy, vinegar, and everything? It's as long as you are, hold it down. As long as you hold it down. Yeah. And this is normally on Twitch. Yes. And now, when they send it in Twitch, are they sending a command or are they yeah. sending? They're a... doing exclamation point soy or exclamation point. Flip. No, I got you. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Kind of that standard. I got you. Right, I got right. you. So let's see what we got here, guys. I'm gonna hit soy. Let's hold it for like three seconds, maybe. One, two, three. Yeah. Now we're we gonna see it coming in. There. We got to see it coming in? Well, it already oh, it came already, in. Oh, it already came in. Okay, Once you I release missed it. the button. I missed it. Okay. So let's do, let's see. So let's do some oil in here. I think oil needs to come next. What do y'all yeah, yeah. think? One, two, three. We'll just do some threes right now. We'll yeah, play with yeah. this. All right? And then what's this one? That's Worcestershire. Worcestershire. That one's a little low, That's so it a, might not yeah, work. Yeah, 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 yeah. We got, anybody want some vinegar here? Anybody need some vinegar? Y'all see anything? No? Yeah. No vinegar? Okay. <laughs> I think we're done on the ingredients. Yeah, you want to give us and some so, flips? Let's give it some flips. Let's see what happens when I flip the flip button. Yeah. Oh, nice. <laughs> there you go. We'll flip this up a little bit more. Yeah. And so, 
So this is actually something I could probably rig up with some foot controls at home. Yeah. And while I'm playing my game, I could do some yeah. you know, do some other stuff. That'd be awesome. That'd exactly. Be awesome. That's yeah, cool. Yeah, no. I mean, the original one of this was even more chaotic because it would go up twice as high. Okay. But uh, it destroyed my stove when they did that, and yeah. I needed something safer for open yeah, sauce. That's so we true. Had to that's it true. A bit. Have you tried training mice or parrots to do this? I do not have either mice nor parrots. Okay. Okay. All right. All right. But that's awesome. That's a great little machine. I like that. Oh, yeah. So it's there's fun, all their right? ingredients, guys. That's a beautiful thing. <laughs> See, everything is designed for a reason. Yeah, well, yeah. this is designed to be funny. There you go. <laughs> and that's the reason. You kind of like the guy with the cricket and the pets with teeth on them over there. Yeah, 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 yeah exactly. Yeah, yeah, I love it. This well, was all built in four hours. It was a rush job. Oh, okay. So how do they find you online? Oh, uh, twitch.tv slash uoslab. Okay. Yeah, oh, you can see are. the uh, URL here on the duct tape. It's on the giant sign behind us. There we go, guys. Y'all got any questions for them? If they come up with questions, I'll come back and talk to you. Absolutely. All right, sure. thank you, sir. Right, see y'all. We're going to keep walking. If you have, if I'll see anything, let me know. Sorry, that was just fun. That brought me back to my college days. I'm going to keep going. Got a little more robots. This is a good robot area. Now, look, we got, uh, here's Electrify Your Adventures. Mecca, if y'all know Mecca, they've got some good stuff. Is, I feel like it's a dragon or a fish or something. I don't know. I don't know. Not really sure. All right, guys, what you got? What you want to know? Gyro Palm. Let's see what we got here. Hey, how's it going? Yeah, I'm you Dominic. good. Dominic, all right. I'm going to hand you that. I'm going to let you talk and tell us what we're looking at sure. here. Yeah. This is the Gyro Palm Spectrum. Uh, essentially, Gyro Palm is a patented technology that we have. Uh, that enables users to control electronics, computers, appliances, and robotics with a flick of the wrist using customizable gestures. Okay. And what you see here is the Gyropalm Spectrum package. That is a combination of the Gyropalm's patented technology and market-leading Viewzix AR glasses. And these glasses enable you to remotely view and monitor robots from anywhere in the world. So for example, here we're driving a Boston Dynamics robot dog for, for example, search and rescue missions or inspections. And you can actually see in the corner of your eye a uh, imposed view of what the camera would be seeing. And you'd be able to drive this robot just with a flick of the wrist using okay. very subtle gestures. Mm -hmm. Now we use um, very fine-tuned gestures that detect micro movements of your hand, so bioacoustic signals, so that you can actually accurately control them with our onboard AI. Okay. Here, let me give you a quick demo. Well, I recognize the guy in the video. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's me. Check this out. We're knocking down some cups with a flick of my wrist, and I'll show you another one where I can control a DSLR just with a flick of my wrist. Check that camera out. Okay. Just oh, like that. Good. We're able so to control the camera. Use his wrist here. Yeah, to control the camera. You want to see again? Yeah. There we go. So I'm going to look at the wearable, and I'm going to double snap my fingers, and I'm going to do a gesture, and there you have it. The camera is taking photo. There you go. Yeah. That's so, pretty awesome. Yeah, thank you. That's we flew awesome. drones with it, and we can actually control a maze with it. So there's many different control modes of our gyro palm, about four different control modes and hundreds of different use cases you could do. This is called direct driving, and with a simple gesture and intuitive motions, I could use very micro motions on my fingers to navigate this maze. And you can see I'm not really moving. I'm not using my elbows. I'm not using the accelerometer. I'm using AI process data that's 99% accurate from the watch and being processed here. And the beautiful thing is developers can use this to their advantage too. Now, if you notice, I could use my hands for anything else, including holding the mic. I could be completely hands-free without not actually touching the watch at all. Okay. So here's another demonstration where I can actually control Vortex. This is behind glass. So this is a um, chemical stirring uh, machine that you'd see in any bio lab or any uh, chemistry lab. And you'd be able to control this. I'd be able to control this That's by awesome. this vortex by using pure gestures. So this is using Bluetooth low energy. The other one was using Wi-Fi. And we have also compatibility with ESP now. And as you saw, the camera IR, uh -huh. right? We also have telepresence robotics. So you could say, hey, what else can I do with Jarrah? We got telepresence robotics everywhere. So a few years ago, we actually created a telepresence robot called the Omnibot. <laughs> And this is what I have here. This is the Omnibot V1. And what you see here is a customized robot that we can tailor to your needs. I know a friend who is a hotel owner. He's a Dominic. In a few months, I'm going to go visit this hotel later on. And I said, you know what? Why don't you get an Omnibot? You know, you could drop in in seconds just by doing this, just by taking your hands, snapping, and actually activating it. 
and driving it. There you go. So with my ha hands free, this robot can be anywhere in the world, but we can mail this to US and Canada. We have clients who use this. It's like Zoom, but on wheels. So you check this out. I'm able to drive this anywhere I want with high precision. And once I get to my destination, I could just stay there and put my hand down, just like that. Now I could do my hands. You want to do a high five? A sure. Yeah? All right. And then finally, the largest robot in town. We see here the Omnibot V2. This is an autonomous mobile robot that runs ROS, robot operating system. And it is also Jarvan compatible. So you can see how many different things we could do now. With a few snaps of my fingers and a flick of my wrist, I'm able to start controlling this and uh, precisely steer this robot out of this tight corner and actually get the robot on. So this actually can carry freight of hundreds of pounds. So we could put pallets on here. Actually, I loaded half of my exhibit using this robot. So it is very amazing. Awesome. It could go very fast, but according to the e-stops, we can e-stop it very fast as well. So. We talked to OSHA before, and our t technology is supported by NSF, as well as we won the most promising innovation at Sensors Expo last year. So we're very proud of that, about that. But talking to OSHA, we figured that in 2020, there was 4,000 fatalities, not from COVID, but from heavy lifting accidents. So we could invent something that could impact lives in a positive way. It'd be using this wearable, encouraging more people to use it, to have remote working and safer working environments, and also, we gotta admit, it's very entertaining for yeah, even the smallest fun. use cases or Definitely. the largest ones. Yeah, Definitely. thank you so much. Hey, and no we problem. hope um, you can visit jaropalm.com to learn more, uh, more about our technology as well. And jaropalm.com slash order to connect with us and buy some of our amazing products and check out our amazing technology. Awesome. We hope you subscribe and thank you for coming to thank Open you. Sauce. Yeah. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you very much. All right, guys. Hey, if y'all have any questions, let me know. If they have questions, I'll come back and get you. Sure. And here's my card. If you can share the okay. link with me, I appreciate it. Okay, awesome, awesome. Thank you very much. That was awesome. That was really cool. I really like that. Guys, we are in Open Sauce in uh, San Francisco. Just having fun, walking around, just getting to meet people, seeing the different projects that are here. Crystal Lee, we will hit the rope. We will hit those bots in a bit. They're in the room next to us, and so we're definitely going to do that. But I wanted to meet with these guys and talk with these guys. I, I'm a big fan of Form Labs. I think they're doing some really cool stuff. Uh, it's really, really exciting, just some of the materials that they're working with. I'm going to kind of step through here and show you some of this. Maybe somebody will come up and talk with me in a moment. But look, they are 3D printing. Look at that. Look at that. Those bottles. Isn't that awesome? Isn't that amazing? That is just really cool. There's one of them right there. That is just really, really cool. Just some really different uh, type materials and stuff. It's not glass. It's a resin but it's a transparent <laughs> resin. I assume it's a transparent resin yeah. that we're looking at here. Yeah, you can and see so, it inside the machine yeah. right now. It uh -huh. those yesterday. Yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> and so um, Form Labs is really great. They've got some good materials. Um, it's more of an, um, what would you call this? This is an MSLA or is this, yeah, what are we? Yeah, okay. this is MSLA. Okay. This is Form 4 and this is our most recent SLA machine. Okay. Yeah, so we launched okay. this in April. Okay. Super new. Okay. Awesome. Awesome. That's great, <laughs> guys. If you have any uh, food safe, I don't know. I would assume. No. Unfortunately, it's not not legally food safe. I don't know of any 3D printed material that's legally food safe. Yeah. A lot of the times, it's because it's more about the uh, the, the layer the porosity, lines and the surface that, finish. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. But As we have, to, yeah. But it is a cured material, so in theory. Not saying to use this by any means. Do not. I'm not a lawyer. I don't get legal legal advice. Yada yada yada. You know what we're saying. But this is, um, you know, it's a standard resin kind yeah, of thing. Yeah, it's a cured resin. We have biocompatible materials, so we have materials that are safe for extended skin contact and actually safe to use inside of your body or inside of your mouth for dental applications. Okay. So. You know, you can okay. use them in your body. You can't legally eat food off of them. Right, right, you know, right. I, got I, I didn't decide that system. <laughs> and I don't either. Yeah. And so that's awesome. So show us some of these prints that are here. Yeah, what have we got? So Just... we have some examples of SLA and SLS technology here. Okay. This machine is SLA, which is resin-based. Right. So that's making things like the bottles. Um, they printed this um, Flexi here Shark model which is one of our most beautiful colors. This is yeah. actually a dental like material. That. Oh, that's cool. Um, and then you can make some engineering parts kind of like this. And then we also have lots of SLS parts. So these are 
powder-based, uh, powder-centering. So this all printed in one part. This is supportless. It has no support material at all when it prints. Um, and you can do a uh, rigid material like this. We also have a flexible SLS powder. This is TPU powder. So this is made on the same machine, uh, but it has this really flexible uh, feel to it. Same with this one. This is like extremely soft because of this lattice structure. <laughs> yeah. Okay, and awesome. And stuff like this uh, golf ball, which is... Oh, that's awesome. I love that. Yeah, yeah so that's rubber, cool. So. That is cool. Yeah. Uh, what other materials, what all types of materials can you use in the machines? Like? Yeah. So this machine has over 40 materials that we sell that can be used in it. Um, we formulate all our own materials. So we have everything from like the really squishy soft elastomers to like rigid, durable engineering materials. We have um, materials for jewelry applications, medical and dental applications. Um, we actually have fully 3D printed silicone, which is a really cool kind of new material. This is 100% silicone that's 3D printed right. on this machine. Yeah. Right. No, I got gotcha. you. I got gotcha. you. That's awesome. Yeah. Um, what build volume are we talking about on this machine right here in particular? Um, Do you know? I, let's see. I remember off the top of my head. Yeah. And Blackwell, that's not a fair Specs comment. Here. I don't take that. <laughs> yeah, we're at 20. This is centimeters, 20 by 12.5 by 21 centimeters. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So it's awesome. a bigger volume than the Form 3. Um, mm -hmm. And then you're also going to get a much higher speed than the Form 3. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. Awesome. Thanks. Well, thank you for sharing. Oh, yeah. Thanks so All much. All right. Thank you. And this is Form Labs, guys. A really great company. Really, really awesome. Um, we got, got a question on outside, like durability for the sun or anything. Do you have products that are good for exterior? For exterior. So because it's UV pure, it has some like UV sensitivity. If it's in the sun for long periods of time, it can get like a yellowing effect and it also becomes more brittle over time. Right. Um, so what we recommend is using like a UV protective, kind of like a spray coat or something like that if you're doing stuff for like long sun exposure. Right. Um, but if it's just like a like something visual that you just want to display, like it's going to be fine outside. Okay. Yes, for engineering purposes, like you do see a material degradation over time. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. Thank you very much. If they have any other questions, I'll come back. For sure. Yeah. All right. Thank you. All right. We'll keep walking. Keep walking. Y'all see anything that I skip over? Let me know. Hey, what's up, Sean? How are you doing? Good to see you. Good to see everybody. Hey, thank y'all. So, Crystal, did that answer your question as far as the build of the machine? Oh, we got some nice little cute robots. Let me see. see the remote back there. <laughs> That's awesome. Thank you. There's the QR code if y'all want to scan it. There you go. Thank you. Awesome. Good, 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 good. Yeah, that was really cute. I like some of these little, some really neat art and just fun stuff that's here. What am I looking at? Oh, so we got some kind of magnet. So it's a fully animatronic pet. A fully, say it again? It's a fully animatronic pet. Okay. It has a, a facial sensor. It can sense up to 10 people. Has an AI with environment sensors, wow. so it can sense the, uh, the environment or when it changes the environment. It can predict when you get home from work and get excited. <laughs> it has touch sensitivity on all the metal parts. Oh wow, that is and awesome! And then this one has motors in the feet, so it can sit, stand, dance. <laughs> That's all great. Stuff. That is really cute. And they all have a person per, built-in personality that changes and evolves. Okay. So you can gain its trust and it, it, it will do more things. <laughs> oh wow, that is really cool. That is cute. That is cute. So there's a couple of different ones here, guys. Yeah. So this one, this we're going to be selling the kits. Uh huh. So the, so, yeah. so yeah, this is a, a epoxy one. So the kits will be all the parts. All this uh, wooden one. So it'll come with all the parts. It's basically the base base model. Uh -huh. And then, yeah, it'll come with uh, all the parts, and then you bend the metal to the shape. And then all the electronics is just sold separately. Okay. It's, a, it's an Arduino and 
a bunch of sensors. Oh, that's awesome. That is awesome. That's great. So have you all designed these together? Is this you? What? Uh, all him. She's like, all him. Uh, <laughs> is that a, I don't want to have anything to do with that, or a, I'm just here to support. Yeah. Okay, okay, okay. All right. No, I understand either way. I do. <laughs> that's awesome. Thank you. Yeah, I'm going to make sure they see your QR code and everything. Oh, yeah. So if they register today, uh, I'll give them Oh, wait. Code. Hold on. Say it again. If you register today, I'll give you a code. So for the pre-order, you'll get special edition parts. Okay. Okay. So if y'all pre-order these guys, there you go. And, uh, Screenshot that. There's the, the group. And you can find these little cute birds. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right. We're going to keep walking. Keep walking. I have not hit the RC planes yet. Those are in the next room as well. So we'll see those in just a little bit. If y'all see anything, let me know. I will stop and ask questions. <laughs> yeah, the Furby dog, I know, right? It is kind of, it is weird now that they've started dressing up those dog robots. I feel like they're trying to, they're definitely trying to create nightmares for people. They do have the rooms kind of divided up in types. Now I'm seeing dripping water here, so we're going to ask some questions about what this is. There's, there's, there's water in here, so what are we looking at? Uh, we're looking at my version, my in, my vision for uh, Lord Kelvin's water dropper. Okay. Uh, he, an experiment done in the 1800s. So uh, it's actually creating. Pardon my voice. I've been I've been doing this for a we while. We all understand. It's like been that kind of couple of days. <laughs> Me and everyone else, yeah. I'm sure. So it's actually generating high voltage uh, through the action of the dripping water. Uh. Okay. See, there's a positive feedback loop where each of these plates, um, any kind of slight change in voltage uh, between them will induce the opposite voltage in the water running alongside next to them. That opposite charge gets trapped when the water starts to form droplets. That Those droplets bring the opposite charge down to the strainer. Okay. And then the strainer becomes opposite polarity charged from, <laughs> from, from the, the plate. From the plate. Okay, I follow it. Each strainer is wired up to the plate on the other side. Okay. So now each plate is charging the other plate in the opposite way. way. Okay. So okay. as the and as they charge each other stronger, the charge in the water droplets become stronger and charge the and other the plate up stronger. Uh, I got and you. the voltage builds up higher and higher and higher until a spark jumps across the strainers. Oh wow. So now how often does that happen? It depends on um, if anyone's watching. <laughs> if no one's watching, like once every like maybe ten seconds, yeah. if people are watching uh, you'll be lucky for it to happen at all. Okay. I think it's a quantum effect. Uh, yeah, it could be. It and could it's be. also almost impossible to see because there's almost no current behind it and way too uh, much light here. Right. Yeah, right. I kind of have to get lucky. Well, also, sometimes just water splashes on it and shorts it out. Well, you know, if you put it in a box with a cesium atom, it could be happening all the time. Well, uh, <laughs> uh, let me know when Sorry, you find I one. <laughs> You have a good day, man. Now, where can they find... I assume you do experiments like this all the time? I, I do, but I, I have not made them public yet. Okay, awesome. But uh, maybe soon. Okay, okay. Well, how, how would we be on the lookout for that to happen if, if you did? Well... Is there somewhere we can find you? Uh, the YouTube channel name... Uh, it, it, the empty YouTube channel. Okay. Uh, right. The name is It's Coupling. I T S C O U P L I N G. Okay. And maybe by the time you see this video, there will be something on that channel. This is actually live. <laughs> he Never know mind. Live, no, but I will be sending more of this out. So that's awesome. Well, thank you very much. That's pretty cool. I like that. I like. Well, that. I'm glad I didn't know because I, I would have probably stumbled oh, even no, more. You did great. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, you have a good day.
All right, guys. Hey, guys, we are at Open Sauce here in San Francisco, guys. Hey, so we are in uh, the B Hall today. We were in A Hall yesterday. We are working our way over to the BattleBots, and then we'll see the RC stuff. Um, a lot of really, really, really cool inventions here. And um, yeah, we're just gonna keep moving on. If you see something, I will go back to it. If you have questions for somebody, let me know. What's up, Alien, how are you doing? Good to see you. Good to see you, good to see you. Everybody come in, ask questions, please. This is the robotics section where we see all sorts of interesting, just, I don't know, robots, ways to control things. And we're just gonna keep stepping through. And the trope displays from all sides. Let's we'll see what happens here. Ah, look at this. We're going to move around. How are you doing? All right, hold on, guys. I'm going to hand the microphone over and get this explained. So this, you hold is, it. so this is an omnidirectional display. So it doesn't matter which way you look at it when you're standing around it. You will always see the exact same thing. It has no sides, it has no back. We call this an anatrope because it's similar to a zoetrope in how it works, but it's much more advanced technology than a 150-year-old kid's, uh, kid's toy. Okay, okay, that's awesome. And so where can they find you? Find us, uh, anatrope.com is probably okay. the easiest way to find so us there. Anatrope.com, guys. Awesome. Anything else you want to tell us about it? Uh, We're from Australia, Australia. Oh, Australia, and it's been a very long trip to come here. But the reason we came here is because this is actually as far as we're aware, no one has done this before. This That's is awesome. as far as we're aware, new technology. I spent awesome. two months searching for it, and I couldn't find any examples of this before. So I did what anyone else would do if they did in that situation. I contacted a lawyer, filed the paperwork, and now it's patent pending. <laughs> awesome. That so great. we're here trying to look, see if we find the right people who know, who, someone who knows someone to turn this into a natural product. Okay. So that way we can actually uh, get this in the hands of people so that it can be something that people can just buy. So if you're watching and you happen to know anyone, uh, just get in contact with me, andatrope.com will redirect you to the website. And yeah, I'd love to see this actually something that other people can have. Awesome. Well, thank you. Thank you. What part of Australia are you from? Brisbane, Australia. Okay. Okay. Sunny Queensland. We have a good. We have a good friend from that area, Clock Spring. He's a 3D oh, designer. Oh, Clock Spring. Yeah. So, yeah. We love. We, we really I, love I've him. I've never met him, but I've always wanted yeah, to. He, yeah. He's he does a fantastic good guy. work. Yeah. He yeah. does. He does. Well, thank you for sharing this with us. And, Not a problem. Uh, everybody's liking it. Some people's minds are really blown. They love it. Like, share, so, subscribe. Yeah. All those words. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> thank you, sir. You yeah. have a good day. Cheers. All right, guys. I know. Wouldn't that be awesome, that drive-in theater? I think that'd be great. I really think that'd be great. All right, we got the Voron booth. We've all seen Voron. I won't spend too much time here unless y'all have stuff that y'all want to see. If you want to say hey to anybody, let me know. Anything new at Voron? Didn't look like it. I hadn't seen anything. They still have the same big 3D, the th same big printer that they had um, as far as the Voron. I can't remember what series that is, but I didn't see anything new. You know, they've got the upgrades to the V2 and all that. So, um, I have not seen a ton of up and comers as far as technology of 3D printing here. Uh, the only one would be the Micronics, which we saw yesterday. That was the sub $5,000 SLS printer, which was really, really cool. Um, and uh, I really, really want that machine. Uh, it's a new Kickstarter that has happened. So if you look up Micronics, you'll find them on Kickstarter. And uh, I think it right now the machine's about $3,500. Uh, for the Kickstarter and you would get one. It's still in beta. The first people who get it will be in beta. I'll post a video on it later uh, after I interviewed them yesterday. 
but that's the one to me that's really, really, really awesome. That's kind of the newest thing because it brings a really big, very expensive technology down to kind of something, while a lot of us can't necessarily afford it, it, it comes within the realms of us getting close to being able to afford, if that makes sense. So I'm excited about it. We got ARM here solving robotics cubes with robots built of Lego. So they've had a big booth here, big presence here uh, all week. We've got sewing machines. We've got... Oh. Y'all might recognize that guy right there. See him? Y'all know him, right? He came over to the Cookie Cat booth earlier, was playing the game. We got Nerf products. The project box. Oh, what are we doing? I feel like we're shooting a laser and melting something. I don't know what this is. Oh, we're throwing Legos or something. Oh, darts. That's, ah, uh, gotcha. Okay. There's a Nerf darts. That's awesome. That's awesome. Thank you for the likes, guys. Thank you for the gifts and everything. Um, Um, but now, if y'all see anything, let me know. And they've got a big putt putt course over here. We won't worry too much about it. But y'all can see all the people playing putt putt. We're going to step on into the other room. Well, I've been going about an hour. I've got two more halls to get through with y'all. This is the last day. This ends at 6 o'clock today. All right, here we go with the BattleBots, guys. I'm going to step through the BattleBots. If y'all have anything you want to see, I know the mini golf is nice. Hey, guys, we are at Open Sauce in San Francisco, or a little bit south of San Francisco. And um, you can see we got Tombstone. This is the BattleBot section. Stepping through. If you see anybody that you recognize, I mean, come on. You probably recognize that guy right there. What do you think? What do you think? Any of y'all know this guy, the Tombstone? Now, not all the machines are here. I'm not a big BattleBot, but I have a friend who's really, really into the BattleBots, and uh, he was excited uh, to see. I sent him a bunch of pictures yesterday. He was loving it. Here's Tantrum. I've heard of Tantrum. I hear that name all the time. So now a lot of these are battle damaged right now. I don't know if they just came out of a fight or what. But so you can see kind of the internals of Tantrum. Or wait, or is this Tantrum? I can't remember. <laughs> You'll have to tell me, Crystal. <laughs> All right. Now this is, these are like, um, remote control battleships uh, where you go out in the water and you play battleship. These are kind of right next to the, all the battle bots. We'll get back to the battle bots in just a second. Oh, I think he's moving ammunitions. What do these shoot? Quarter inch ball bearings. Quarter inch ball bearings? Yeah. Oh, okay. That's awesome. Now, now that I, oh, I'm seeing like battle damage over here. Absolutely, these things are designed to fight and sink each other. That's awesome. That's a, so you don't like park in one place and everybody guesses where you are. No, you ride no. around and shoot at each other. Absolutely. Okay, that's awesome. Yeah, your your job is to protect your team and kill the other team. Okay, that's awesome. That is beautiful. Now, where do these battles happen? So we have a pond in Watsonville, so it's uh, south of Santa Cruz, by okay. 20 minutes or so. Okay. And we have a battle about every month down there. Okay, okay. that's pretty cool. Yeah. Well, thank you. Thank you. That was awesome. Here we go, guys. I mean, come on. Who doesn't want to drive a battleship? Oh, sorry, warship. Yeah. <laughs> that's awesome. That is great. Oh, that one's really nice. I like that one. All right, back over to the battle bots. There's a lot of battle bot stuff here, guys. Ah, Manta, here we go. I know the name Manta. Y'all know Manta, that weapon right there, dude. Come on. Oh, they even got a mini Manta. 
really. I know, Crystal. I know. You can check out mantabattle.com. I do this, and y'all can screen capture, guys, and the QR code will take you. That is great. Hey, guys, if y'all have any questions for any of these guys, let me know. Manta is near us. Yeah. Oh, oh, oh. See, I, I know this one. I've seen this one. I don't know the name of this one. This is the one with the, yeah, weird flippy blade. Oh, Doom. There you go. Crystal could probably name every one of these. But you can see how they've taken the shells off, the casings off. They've got a lot of damaged parts and everything laying out. That's kind of the fun for me. Now, Crystal, can you name this one for me? The body is off. And I'm going to show you the body, and you'll immediately know who it is. I knew this one. I knew this one. We're going to come on over to the body. Gigabyte. Now this one, I do. I've seen a big, crazy, insane battle with Gigabyte. So that body is heavy. I was over here yesterday, and <laughs> it's heavy, guys. I mean, just it alone could smash something. All right, we'll keep going. More into the battle bots. End game. End game. The one with the scoop and that weird flippy weapon that they like so much. It is kind of fun. Yeah, Gigabyte is a great spinner. It is kind of fun to see these. I go to a friend's house and he has it on all the time. So it's kind of fun to see them in real life and actually get the scale of size. They are a little bit bigger than I thought they were. Looking good, looking good. We're going to keep going through the battle bots. We'll get to the rest of the room in a minute. Now here's where I thought this was a very unique idea. If you like hijinks, this is hijinks. I assume hijinks is a relatively, I don't think I've ever seen hijinks. But it seems to be a relatively newer machine maybe. And um, they are actually selling parts from their battles. It's pretty cool. And so you could actually like get a little patches and just little pieces of the machine itself. It's pretty awesome. Now is this, sub is this something y'all are just doing here or do y'all sell these parts all the time? So we do have parts for sale basically after every fight. These are left over from last season that we filmed. Okay, awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Still geeking out over Tombstone. So here's some... Capture those QRs, guys. And y'all get to these places. Oh, we had somebody in the room who said, Hi, Jen. <laughs> Crystal Lee Craftworks. A three, <laughs> so, <laughs> awesome, awesome, awesome. All right. They got tiny bots fighting down here in the arena. I'm sad there's no smoke or really weird obstacles. Try not to skip any of the machines. Uh, here you go. These are the ones that they fight in this little arena over here. Well, you might need two hands for this. <laughs> That's awesome. That is great. Uh, no, Tombstone did not appear to be selling anything. Uh, Hijinx seemed to be the only one that was selling stuff. Scorpio. <laughs> you hate Scott. <laughs> That's awesome. I love that they have personalities of things that you hate. That's great. That is great. Horizon. How's it going, guys? How are y'all doing? 
I'm just going through. I'm on TikTok Live. I've got some people in my room who love BattleBots. Awesome. Like, my best friend loves BattleBots, so I'm just walking around. Um, hey, any questions you have? They're asking about Gary from Free Shipping right now. <laughs> that Gary? Uh, or that Gary? I don't know. Or that Gary? That Gary? I don't know. There's a lot of Garys around here, guys. <laughs> so, well, so give me a little bit. I don't watch BattleBots a lot. My best friend loves BattleBots, and every time I walk in his house, it's on. I sent him pictures from yesterday on all the machines. I'm going to give you that microphone. Oh. Um, just kind of, I don't know. Give these guys something you know your fans would want. Uh, Horizon. Horizon. Guys, y'all know Horizon? Well, a lot of people have been coming by today looking at just this wacky looking robot and asking, how does it work? And I'd love to answer that. Uh, You'd be surprised to hear that this is actually on a completely passive arm. This is just a, a plain axle on the bearing. And how the robot actually works is when we have these two big 25 pound spinning blades going. <laughs> All of the torque from those spinning will passively move the arm. So what it's actually doing is it's absorbing all the gyroscopic forces in there into this arm and making it spin too, right. which increases our kinetic energy as it's spinning. And also at the same time cancels out the gyro so we can drive like there's basically no weapon on it. We can drive like perfectly robot. That's great. Uh, which is really fun. Um, so as long as it's balanced, it's pretty easy to yeah, drive? Yeah, as long as it's spinning, it's, uh, yeah, you'll okay. see other big robots, like everybody will know Tombstone is like the big famous one, Yeah. big horizontal spinner, and when it spins up, you'll see the whole robot torque one way. Yeah. Ours doesn't do that. Okay. Because it cancels itself out. Okay. So, yeah. That's cool. That is awesome. Well, thank you for explaining that. Thank oh, yeah, you, no thank problem. You. Are y'all guys have any questions? Yeah, they're going, oh yeah, what are those spinner weapons? And then they're all talking in here, so. Oh, yeah. There's a awesome. ton of other builders here. Bug everybody. They love to talk okay. about Okay, awesome, awesome. Thank you for sharing. Thank you. No Guys, if y'all have questions or see anything, uh, let me know. I'll ask people the questions. Here we go. We got Megan. Looks like all of the pilots, so they call them pilots, so they call them controllers. I don't know. They're all here. Uh, hey guys, how's it going? Good to see y'all. This is Mad Catter. Say again? Oh, this is Mad Catter. Mad Catter. Mad Catter. Now, don't, don't shove. Oh, Whiplash? Somebody's saying they saw Whiplash. Okay, so that's Whiplash. I'm not I'm not a huge bot fan, but a lot of people on my channel are like, go to that place. I want to see them. And so um, we're just I'm just walking through looking at everybody. And um, <laughs> that's so the Mad Catter. Kind of talk, tell me what we're looking at. You can hold that. Tell me what we're looking at. Uh, this is Mad Catter. It's a 250-pound combat robot that you might have seen on the show BattleBots. Uh, this is our latest configuration. Right now, it's got the pontoons on the front and the side armor plate, so this is meant for kind of uh, quickly moving around the arena. We have a heavier weapon configuration in this uh, mm -hmm. uh, in this particular configuration. Okay. And uh, like this a... has been through a couple matches, so it's a little beat up. Uh, yeah. But uh, trying to think what else we can cover That's here. That's awesome. That's so we have a big fan in the room. Yeah. And now this is like a scooper. Yeah, uh, this is this is mostly for self-riding. We do use it for okay. some control of the other robots. So okay. This would normally lift up. In our last match, this entire module got ripped out. Uh, so okay. this is literally as it was from the last match that we ran. <laughs> That's awesome. And it's we find it a little more enjoyable for folks to see, yeah, like I think so. the damage, the cracks in the welds, how material fails. If you get a zoom up on here, you can see the discoloration yeah. in the steel from the heat of impact is so hot that that metal yeah. will actually melt yeah. uh, and re, you know, re-solidify. So it, it's it is... amazing to me to see how they're built. Oh yeah. Because I do watch them. When I go into my friend's house, they're always on. And so just watching, but actually realizing the damage that happens, that is pretty, that's impressive right there. Yeah, especially if you think about, you know, the type of materials we're using. This is like armor grade, you know, metal for tanks. You might see it as like uh, wear liners for excavators, uh, all that type of okay. stuff. This is like very high performance material and it's still failing with the forces that are getting transferred during any kind of hits like you can see on the, the oh, TV okay. over there. So, okay. Yeah. Now I've got a question. What's the fastest speed? Uh, like how fast it travels? I don't know. That's what I'm kind of wondering. Crystal, 
Uh, rephrase that question. Let me know exactly what you're talking about when you say fastest speed. You have a tip speed. That's awesome. That's great. Looking at the wheels, guys. Yeah. Look at the wheels. So there's no limit on how fast the bot can travel. Okay. Um, general rule of thumb is you kind of want to be somewhere between 12 and 16 miles per hour. Okay. It starts to get just hard to control as That's a driver. Too fast. Yeah. Um, and then there's a tip speed limit. So given the weapon, the tip cannot exceed 250 miles per hour. Okay. So that's a safety restriction. Um, and so as the diameter changes, the relative RPM may have to change. So if it's bigger in diameter, that relative RPM will go down so that the tip speed is within limits. And likewise, smaller can spin faster. Yeah. Now, is that something that you've built into the system? Like as you lose things, it automatically accommodates for that? Or oh. is that something you have to manage? Like during a battle, if you start losing things, there are things you have to be careful of mm. to not outpace no. something or keep sure. things in control? Generally speaking, as we enter the match, we have to meet whatever restrictions there are for tip speed or whatever. Okay. If there's a transformation through the match because the weapon gets smaller because it gets ground up or uh. something, we're not too worried okay, about there that. there you go. Um, we definitely design for those uh, you know, design considerations or those rules. So we're going to hit as close to 250 miles an hour on that tip speed as we can. Okay. Because it's just, you know, force, right? Okay. So yeah, yeah, yeah. we can get that RPM all the way up. Uh, we can get as much energy out of this weapon transferred into the opponent yeah, as we can. Okay. okay. So. so top speed of, you said 15 to 16 or 12 to 16, you said? Uh, as far as moving speed of the, generally, of the bot? Generally. Yeah. Okay. All right. Awesome. I'm just trying to see, make sure. That was the speed, movement of speed was the question. Yeah. So, but she's saying that's crazy. That's awesome though. That's really cool. Thank you for all that information. Yeah, absolutely. Now, I'm going to show my ignorance. Are you all the pilot? Are you called pilots or controllers or what do you? Oh, drivers. 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 Yeah. Okay, I wasn't sure. I wasn't sure. Yeah, and you'll see on some robots, right, they got a couple different drivers. Because right. just the coordination of like somebody's got to do this, someone's got to drive around. And modulating the speed, like you were asking earlier, like can you adjust things on the fly? You can. Right. You can increase or decrease the RPM of the weapon because maybe you don't want to grind on the opponent. You want to actually get a good bite. So you got to slow it down so they got time to get in there. Or I got gotcha. you. Maybe you're upside gotcha. down. You don't want to burn out motors, that type so of stuff. So that's really a lot of teamwork. you got to talk approach and how you're uh, – yeah. that's awesome. Yeah. That is great. That is great. Well, thank you cool. for sharing all that. Yeah. Thank you. And tell me your name. Oh, I'm Trent. All right. And you? I'm George. All right. Awesome. Thank cool. you, guys. Yeah. Y'all yeah, have a good day. All right. Uh, I guess this is an old plate. Here we go. Oh, yeah, this is our, this is our other West, uh, armor configuration. Okay, so that's the other armor. Okay. Awesome. That's great. So there you go, guys. That's pretty much everybody that's here. There is one sitting over here by itself. I don't know what that is. Fat Gus. There we go. Fat Gus. Huh? Malice. Oh, the this. Robot. Malice is the robot. Okay. So Malice. Oh. We got somebody moving things here. So there's Malice. That's awesome. Uh oh, we might have a. Are you a driver? I am not a driver. You're not a driver. He's a driver. That's okay. He's well, a driver. Tell us a little bit about your bot here. Um, I've got a bunch of fans on the channel. I don't know much, so I'm learning okay. a lot today. Uh, so Malice is a 250 pound. Take this off. Malice is a 250 pound battle bot. We have a horizontal weapon, which we call a horizontal drum. This is big red. This is 60 pounds, spins at 180 miles per hour. Okay. We have a hardened steel tube to the front, brass on the back to balance it. We have a belt that goes right here and it spins. Okay. We have a fat Gus, our driver. Very important. <laughs> okay. Very important. We got two wheels, two wheel drive. These are made out of rubber. Now these are solid rubber. Solid, solid rubber, yeah. We got holes drilled in the sides, you can see, to save some weight. Okay. Because weight, even though 250 pounds is a lot, weight is of the utmost importance. Yeah. Um, and we kind of use this uh, and this as armor okay. as well. So it's kind of okay. like spinning armor. Now, do you have issues with slippage on that rubber at any time? No, you can rough the it weight up. Really? Okay. Yeah, you can rough it up. But also, it's 250 pounds, so the, the weight kind of right. goes in. The floor okay. of the battle box where it's, you fight is steel. 
Okay. And this is actually a pretty good surface. You got good traction. Okay, okay. Yeah. Now you said the whole bot is 250 pounds. 250 pounds. How much is that? 60. That's 60 of your pounds. Yes. Okay, okay. Yeah, and then the you know the wheels, the armor, the batteries, the electronics add up to about 250. Okay, okay. How do you compensate for the spin on on a weapon like so that? So it's horizontal, so we actually stabilize. Okay. Uh, so you don't have to worry about any gyroscopic okay. forces like you do with the vertical. Right. Um, so it actually keeps us stable. Okay. So it's so the there's opposite no of swing in a direction or no. anything. Okay. Yeah, because as long as we're on the same plane, you don't have to worry about any sort of forces going okay. left or right. Okay. Like some of the other vertical bots. Right. right. I got you. So yeah, that's not a problem. Okay. But yeah, that's malice. Um, you uh, point this end towards the other bot, turn it on, hit them, okay. and you give them a good punch. Okay. Now, does malice now here? I could I could tell you this. I'm noticing something in the back. They're asking about self-correcting. Now, I'm looking at this. It looks like a 3D printed part, guys. Here, yes. That probably keeps it from ending up accidentally standing on the end. Correct. Here. Correct. So, so there's a. There's a thing in BattleBots called doing the thing. <laughs> doing the thing. And so <laughs> there was a fight in one of the seasons where it ended up on its butt. Okay. And it did the thing. Okay. So now we have a 3D printed bunny tail and we don't have that problem. Okay. Uh, there is one other obvious 3D printed part. This is Onyx right here. Mark Forge Onyx. Okay. Um, there's some more 3D printed parts on the inside as well. Um, now, any self-correcting, or does it drive on both sides? Correct. It drives upside down. Okay. okay. It drives upside down just as well as uh, you know on its normal face. So okay. because these wheels, you know, ignore the squirrel, obviously. Right. 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 <laughs> It'll work just as well upside down as it will right okay. side up. The only difference is the thing will be spinning the opposite direction. Which is fine. Which is fine. Because it still hits. And then I so. assume if it does the thing on this side. Hey, just spin it, your wheels. Spin, and it, yeah, correct. that'll be fine. Okay. Awesome, that'll be fine. Awesome, so, yeah. awesome. That was some questions in, yeah, the, in the room. So that is awesome, guys. That is Malice. And your name? Alex. Alex. Awesome. Well, thank you for sharing with nice us. Nice to meet you. Bot. Thank you guys to meet you as well. Thank you. All right, guys. I, that is pretty much everybody. Is there any other bot that you want me to talk to? Any other questions here? Uh, that's pretty cool stuff. Pretty cool stuff. Um, I do love the engineering side of this. I really, really do. I've always stayed away from bots because I knew if I got involved in bots, I would never come out. Um, and uh, which probably would have been smart. I probably would have kept me <laughs> more safe. No, I'm thinking. But if y'all saw anybody that you want me to ask, talk to, or anything, uh, Ice Wave, I don't think we saw that one earlier. I skipped that one. So that's awesome. That's BattleBots, guys. So let's keep walking around. Let's see what's on this other wall. Let's step back through here. Swing by Malice. I love their names. Their names are awesome. Can you see Tombstone before I go? Yep. I'll swing back over there. Let's go over to Tombstone. You want me to ask them any questions for you? And then we're going to get to the regular, uh, the rest of this tour. I'm going to keep going. We're going to cover this whole thing. I've got this space and one other. We're heading to Tombstone. I'll see if any of the drivers are around. So here's Tombstone. Do you have any questions? Here's the wheels. A little bit different wheels than the others that we've seen. So are you a driver? I'm the driver, the builder, the pocketbook. Awesome, awesome. Well, I'm going to hand you a mic. We've evidently got a really big fan in the room. Do I, have, like, do I have to be charming? Please don't make yes. me be charming. Well, no. Okay. Uh, right. There's no requirement to be charming here. All right. Fair no enough. requirement. So fair enough. Tell us some about your bot. I'm going to be showing some pictures. We've okay. got. Um, so he created. She's really excited. This is Crystal oh. Lee Craft. She's well known in the 3D printing community. Got it. Uh, okay. On TikTok, and she All loves right. your battle bot. All right. So this is Tombstone. Uh, in the modern era, this is probably the robot that's immediately thought of as when you think of BattleBots, you probably think of this particular one. So, currently, right now, today, I'd say this is probably the single most recognized combat robot in the world. Okay. okay. Awesome. Um, so, this was the 2016 BattleBots champion. Uh, 2015 most destructive robot. So yeah, I've got several awards. Uh, this is the only BattleBot that's won championships in two separate weight categories. So it won once as heavyweight, and earlier it won as a super heavyweight. Okay. So. Uh, so what, 
You've been competing for 24 years, oh, so, wow. so we've been out this for a while. Okay, that sounds. So, what weight are we talking about here? How heavy is this? All right. So the robot, this robot itself is 250 pounds, okay. and just the weapon is 71. Right 71. Now. Okay. Right. Okay. All right. That's cool. Now I notice everybody's using different types of wheels and everything. Uh, I've noticed some more solid rubber wheels. I've noticed just different yeah. types. So What's the strategy one, on that? One, of, one of the key aspects of this sport is you get to do whatever it is you want to do with your 250 pounds. Yep, yep. Okay. Um, these particular ones are kind of heavy, which is why some people would avoid them. Okay. They're actually very tough. Um, and since I only have the two and they're dangling out there, I, I want fairly tough yeah, wheels. Yeah, that makes to, sense. To, totally. To, so, um, and they also, I get these from my sponsor, NPC Robotics. Okay. So, so uh, you know, they take really good care of me and give me these wonderful wheels, so I'm going to keep using them. Okay. That's good. awesome. That's awesome. Hey, guys, y'all have any questions? Um, how come, okay, so that's, how come no cover to protect the tires? So what you're saying is you bought heavier weight ones? Well, so okay, so, so I get asked that a lot. Why okay. don't I put armor around the wheels? Okay. So where the wheels are, is kind of they have to be this wide because that's the width of the weapon. So if, if the wheels were narrower than the width of the weapon, then every time you hit something, it bounces around funny. It drives bad. Okay. So they need to be this far apart. So I'd have to come way out here to armor them. I don't think I could do that for less than 20 pounds. Yeah, I got to. So where's. Where, where, where do I lose 20 pounds? Right. Where, where is it going to come on this? And so your weight constraint is about 250? Is that it's, the... it's 250 pounds. Okay. And when I won the championship, I was 249.6 pounds. <laughs> That's awesome. That, that, there, That's there isn't any weight to give. Okay. 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 I got gotcha. you. I got gotcha. you. So there you go. Um, do you know if they're doing the World Series on the Discovery Channel this year? Or do you know anything about that? Right now, we don't currently have a contract for next filming of the next season. They're still working on it. So yeah. I'm hoping hoping that we hear something soon, okay. but right now we just don't have any any notice on anything going okay. on. Okay, okay, that's awesome, that's awesome. Let's see, yep, Fa who's your favorite competitor? <laughs> Me? <laughs> Me? Okay. The, the simple truth is, almost without exception, I love all of these people. They're a wonderful group. You know, they like to make it seem like we're, you know, we're at each other's throats. There's some measure of drama. The truth is we all want the best we can. We'd yeah. love to f do this. We have a good time. These are all really good friends of mine. Yeah. Who do you like to compete against? Ooh. Um, you know, there, there, there's, there's people that I enjoy hanging out with a lot. So in that regard, it's when you're standing in line, you're getting ready to go into the fight, you love hanging out with that particular group. So like the Whiplash team, I love the entire family. They're, they're, they're awesome. Yeah. You know, I, I've got, they're, they're, well, some of these folks are really good yeah. people. So now, I, I don't watch a lot of it. I see it when I'm over to a friend's house all okay. the time. But I've noticed like when you set up for a battle, you're, the, the drivers are kind of next to each other. Is there a lot of trash talk here in the here in the game? Uh, honestly, very little in yeah, that regard. Okay. I mean, sometimes good naturedly, yeah, you know, of course, oh, you're of going course. down, that of kind course. of stuff. Yeah. But the reality is, most of the time, it's like, hey man, have a good fight. You okay. know, usually it's pretty upbeat. Okay, that's awesome. Yeah. Well, look, I have one request, and this, and she's an awesome person. I want. Is it possible to get an autograph? Absolutely. Okay. okay. Absolutely. I will do that for you, Crystal, and I'll get it to you. <laughs> We've got Ray is OG. <laughs> We got, yeah, Ray the Goats. So we're getting a lot of little comments in here, so that's awesome. That is awesome. Yeah, well, if you, if you go to my YouTube channel, a lot of times I have some of the build stuff I do on some of the robots. Right. So you can kind of see right. some of the stuff that's there. So yeah. there, there's, you know. Uh, the first thing I noticed is yours looks much less battle damage than so many of the other machines. Yeah, um, this one's only got like a fight or two on it. it okay. this, this one doesn't have a long beat up history. Okay. Like, some of so, them have a, you know. Right. So I, I think there's only two fights on this particular frame. Okay. Although okay. this weapon bar, I've had this weapon bar for like 15 years. I think this has got like 50 fights on it. Yeah. And it's only barely got a couple of little scratches <laughs> that is off. So, that is you know, crazy. sometimes they hold up really well. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's awesome. Sometimes. Well, thank you for sharing. Absolutely. Thank you for sharing. Absolutely. I'll come back by a little later. Okay. All right, thank you. Yep. All right, guys. We're going to keep moving. How are you? How are you guys? Coming on through. Huh? Autograph? 
Yeah, I, I, we can do it now. I was going to come back later if you want to talk. Yep. All right, thank you. I'll get you some stickers too, Crystal. They've got some good stickers there. All right, let me know, guys, see if you see anything. Let me know. I'm going to walk through here. We got probably about another hour or so before I have to get back to the table and we start tearing things down. We got some different tanks. We got um, there's some EPS systems. Chavaro. Not sure what we're talking about here. Okay, okay. If y'all see anything, let me know. Hey, I'll ask this guy. Hi, how are y'all doing? Everybody say hi. So we're live on TikTok. Just talk to people who couldn't be here who are interested in things going on. So what am I looking at here? Talk so, to, oh, you can hold that. Okay. I've so, got my own. So this is a rail-guided flywheel rocket launcher. It is designed to help people who are getting into rocketry and have low funds. Uh, when you're in rocketry, each motor can cost at least around $30, but more depending on the quality you get. Um, and that can add up because a good rocket means a lot of tests. So we're able to replace the uh, first uh, first stage of the rocket with a flywheel. Uh, it's uh, there would usually be a flywheel on this hat, but it's on, off for demonstration. Uh, the, this servo pushes it into the flywheel, which is already. Oh, that's the most bad. Let's do another one. <laughs> Oops. There we go. So it pushes it into the flywheel. Can't do it. There's a ceiling. But yeah. Yeah. So the linear speed here uh, pushes against the bracket and accelerates the rocket forward. And as it goes through. Uh, as it goes through multiple different uh, levels, it will get faster until it reaches the target beam. And at the top, this bracket comes off because it's held in place by the steel beams. That's awesome. Um, because this is powered by electricity and not gunpowder or explosives, uh, it means you can charge it up at home and do the rocket tests you need without having to wait two weeks for any shipping. Okay, that's cool, that's cool. Well, thank you very much. How do people find out about you? Uh, Where do they go? Oh, sorry. Oh, a business card right here. So there they are, guys. That's how you find out about them. Check that QR code. Screen capture, quick, guys. Screen capture. There you go. So if you're into rockets, would you like to hear about a modular rocket system? Say again. Would you like to hear about our modular rocket system? Sure. Why not? Okay. So uh, basically, I'll give you a little rundown of what it is. You can hold that. So uh, we're trying out the aerospace. We're, we're an aerospace company uh, startup found right here in the Bay Area. Our main goal is providing modular rocket systems. That's what our brand's all about. Okay. So here's a demo unit we created just for open source. Uh, here you can see, we'll start with the top. Here you can see a um, camera system. This runs on 1.3 gigahertz analog. Camera right there. We're streaming the analog feed to that monitor. And antennas in the back over there. It's a uh, 56 DVI Yagi antenna. Okay. So this antenna allows us to have over 10 kilometers of range on 1.3 analog at two watts for extended for extended flights and extreme durability. And then uh, over here is another system. It is a pretty simple flight controller. We sell this as well. It is a ESP32 S3 with a GPS, an SD card in the back, a barometer, and an IMU. And then it has 12 TVC outputs, or not really TVC, just PWM outputs for anything from servos, munition control, to parachute deploys, etc., etc. Everything is connected by SC30 leads, making it really safe and easy, as well as self-repairable. Self and if we look down here, I can turn it on for you actually. Right now our TVC, our motors are burned out, so you won't run it, but we have an afterburner EDF engine inside of there. But I can turn on. And there's a piece of thrust down here. Y'all can hear that. I can just... There we go. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. Okay. Thank you for sharing all that. No problem. Thank you for And y'all got the QR code so y'all know where things are. Thank you, man. Y'all have a great day. See y'all. All right, keep walking on. So a lot of rocket uh, information here if you're interested in rockets, guys. Uh, this is Open Sauce in San Francisco. Uh, this is the last day of the event. I'm excited to carry you all around. Uh, we've got uh, one more building after this building. We're not halfway through this building yet. Um, here's we got Keg Rocket. Now that should tell you what this is. Oh, we got beer pong over here, so that shows you what kind of keg we're talking about. All right, we're going to come on. This is one of those projects. You know how, you know, back in my day we made couches out of pizza boxes. They're making rockets out of kegs now. So uh, it's pretty, pretty impressive. Uh, that's awesome. You want to tell us a little bit about your project? I don't want to interrupt what's happening here. Okay, okay. All right, so talk to me a little bit. Sure, yeah, so this is uh, this is Project Keg Rocket. It is a 
liquid by propellant rocket, and the whole thing is that it uses actual, almost unmodified beer kegs as its fuel and oxidizer tanks. Okay. So it, it doesn't take itself too seriously. It's meant to be a fun mishmash of you know high tech in air quotes aerospace kind of project with something kind of goofy like beer kegs. Okay. So, that's awesome. Well, thank yeah. you very much. Thank right, you yeah. for sharing. And that's where they find you out right there, huh? Yep. All right. We got Twitter, YouTube. Instagram and the website, guys, right there. And capture that QR code if you need it. Capture, 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 capture. Okay. Oh, the microphone's not working. Hold on, guys. Yo, thank you. Which microphone's not working? Y'all got to let me know. Unplug it. All right, are we back? Are we back yet? Check one, two. Check one, two. Are you hearing me? I don't want to go too far. Okay, awesome, awesome, awesome. Good. Maybe I, I might have bumped the wire or something. So yeah, anyway, so we got a lot, uh, the keg rocket. He said it was just for fun, something they wanted to build. That was a lot of fun. That was the website right there. So, you, so you, yeah, he was talking a little low. I won't disagree with that. It's very, very noisy in here, and our voices are getting really, really tired. Y'all see anything? Stop me. Eureka A2. We're getting over into the drones and here's your airplanes, RC planes and stuff. I love this drone. I mean, come on, look at that. That's an impressive one. Vertical takeoff. Elliptera. Let me know if y'all see anything, and I'll start asking questions, guys. I'm going to start moving through just so y'all can see what's happening. We got some engines here. Hello. Can I show you? Hi, how are you doing? Good. I'm we live. We have a turbojet engine. You have a turbojet engine? Yes. Talk to me a little bit about it. So I'm gonna, you hold that, and we're good. Let okay. me know if you can hear them, guys. Keep going. All right, so this is a turbojet engine, uh, which is... Which is a type of jet engine, um, gas turbine. So there's a compressor, oh, then, um, which compresses the air. The high pressure air is combusted with propane. Uh, then the turbine extracts energy out of the air to power the compressor, and out it comes out the back of thrust. So we're a student team of about 10 to 15 students, depending on how you uh, count it. I don't remember okay. the exact number. And over the last year, we've developed this entirely in house from scratch, manufactured everything ourselves, put it together, and we've been testing it. We're trying to get, we haven't quite gotten it up to our full. Um, Full design operating parameters. Uh, the spool is designed to go 60,000 RPM, and it only go. We only got it up to 17,000 right now because we okay. have a uh, we have a resonant mode that we uh, have to deal with, and we've had a couple other mechanical issues. Okay. So, question: There's like a million different engines in the world. Why? Why have you? Why have you decided to develop one? What's why? What's the point? Uh, it's a real. It's a really good challenge to develop. Uh, any kind of jet engine because because the uh, turbine and compressor are directly linked. It's a really hard dynamics fault to make a to make the cycle work. Uh -huh. So it, it's just a good challenge for us. And okay. we're, we're, we're a student team. We're we don't have like we'll, we'll I'm sure once we get a better more refined engine we'll go like do something fun with it. But we don't have any concrete plans. We're just here to learn pretty much. Okay. Awesome. Thank you for sharing. I was just interested. I think that's a good reason. Awesome. awesome. Well, Thank you very much. Good to see you guys. Keep going, keep going, keep going. Yeah, I should say Happy Father's Day, everybody. And no, there's not millions of jet engines. I just said that. <laughs> Lots of RC planes. How are y'all doing? It's more than okay. RC planes. Huh? It's more than RC planes. I know. They're FPV. I know. They're, they're FPV planes. Ooh. Here, hold on. Sit in the cockpit. But hold, you can hold on to that. Oh. So these are these are F, all set up with FPV or first person view, which allows you to sit in the cockpit and fly the plane. So like this plane here in particular has a head tracking system so that when you're wearing video goggles like these over here, as you turn your head, the goggle the camera will track with the with the goggles and then you get to see around the room. Okay. So this awesome. makes the experience of flying the RC plane more like flying a real aircraft and you get that sensation that you're in the actual plane. 
And well, the drones do a really great job of that. They're fixed cameras. You can't look around, so you can't look to your side and fly forward unless you fly sideways. Right, exactly, <laughs> exactly. Awesome. Okay. But it's an amazing hobby that can wrap all the different technologies and things that people like to develop here, 3D printing, electronics, programming, and then add in things like art and you know flying experiences to give you a, a, a hobby that kind of does everything that STEM and the creators love to do. Okay, that's awesome. Well, thank you for sharing. Thank you. Awesome. Tell us how to get hold of you. Uh, where okay. would you be fine? So we're uh, a model aircraft field in the uh, San Fernando Valley, just north of Los Angeles, okay. called Our Model Aviation. We're an AMA chartered field. You can find our field through either our website at Our Model Aviation. Screen that, club, Screen or that. The QR code. Yeah. You can also find us listed on modelaircraft.org. That's the AMA website. And if you go into Club Finder, we're the very first club listed called Our Model Aviation Club. Awesome. All right. Well, thank you. Thank you. You have a good day. You too. All right. We're going to blow through this, guys. Just kind of get through here. Just show y'all some of the simulators. If y'all do see anything, like I always say, ask questions. I'll step back. Loving this flight simulator. Look at that. I'll step back so you can see the whole thing. It's got it all. I think it needs more buttons, though. What do y'all think? Now, this is another flight simulator I saw yesterday. Yes, this is actually a flight simulator. I think this one and that one should get together. That'd be an awesome experience. And we're going, we're going. Paw print prototyping. If y'all see anything, let me know. I'm gonna keep walking. We're gonna make through some things. Oh, now this was fun. I saw this yesterday. Now, I don't know how it translates on TikTok, but now y'all can see it's a little, little weird filmy stroke thing going on. But if I start mess with the pump, you might be able to see the water droplets reverse and go forward or go faster. Now my frame rate is not matching, but you kind of get an idea. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Ooh. We like all this fun stuff. All right, we're gonna keep going. Electronics, a little keyboard. There we go, look at that, little mini computers. That's so cute. <laughs> it was it was jittering around. I didn't know if it was following me or not. Oh, it looks for blue. Okay, that's awesome. <laughs> that's great. That is great. So slugbotics. There we go. Huh? Oh, okay. So a lot of side projects. That's awesome. That's great. Oh, that's it's following the pants. Yeah, I'm a dancer, guys. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, it's you know it's it's an interesting it's an interesting show. There's you don't come to it and go, oh, this is what I'm going to get out of it. It just it happens, and what you get out of it happens. We got lunar mass here. Let's see, motor-driven strap workout system. Okay, all right. It's a workout system. That's kind of cool. All right. Hey guys, how are y'all doing? You having a good day? Rest in your voices. <laughs> yeah. All right. I'm just going to keep going. If you have something you want to see, if you've heard something that's here, let me know. We did go up to um, A, Series A. We got a guy right here. Let's see, DBS, Dave Builds Stuff. All right, what do we got here? Talk to me about it. Uh, I'm Dave. I, I build stuff. Oh. Um, at Design by Dave is my, well, my YouTube channel. And, um, fortuitous and right there. What's that? That's very fortuitous for you to find a channel called Dave Build Stuff. Are you Dave? I'm just, I'm just oh, 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 yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, no, no. The channel is designed by Dave. The show is uh, Dave Build Stuff. Oh, Not very okay. good branding yeah. on my part. It's all good. Because if you search YouTube for Dave Build Stuff, you'll find some other stuff. But I build, um, well, lately I've been building telescopes. That's okay. the stuff that I've been okay. building. This is my big telescope. This is a uh, 12 and a half inch primary mirror uh, Dobsonian style telescope. 
Uh, mostly 3D printed right. and uh, carbon, carbon fiber. Rods. Carbon fiber tubes for the, the, stru the truss structure and the um, structure for the uh, the base. Okay. And then uh, there's some there's some sheet carbon fiber, machine carbon fiber parts uh, okay. for the mirror box and some of the other structure. Awesome. Uh, this is a, it has, um, you can push it manually, but it's also driven by 3D printed gears. And I can engage motors, and so they can drive it with motors also. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. That's great. Are you streaming right now? I am. Awesome. Live on TikTok. So. Okay. Oh, you're TikTok streaming. Okay. Yep. 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 You're so the second guy that's seen streaming today. Yeah. And I didn't even see anybody streaming yesterday. But. I've, I've been walking around the halls each day streaming awesome. and just showing What's stuff. What's your name, so, by the way? Um, I'm Asylum Life. Asylum Life Asylum Makes. Asylum Life Makes. Yep. Okay. So um, just hang out. Uh, mostly 3D printing, but I do a lot of stuff in the makerspace. Uh, we're really okay. a community of people who help each other. So, That's amazing. You know, we, we talk about living life to the fullest, growing in wisdom, and sharing yeah. what we learn. And okay. So we like to come here and learn as much as we can. Awesome. Well, there's a lot to learn with astronomy. Oh, yes. And one thing... I tell people is I think today we tend to think of astronomy and telescopes as kind of being something reserved for scientists and NASA and huge budgets and space telescopes. Right. But that's not really the case. It's much more accessible than you might think. Like space is right there. Like yeah. it's not all you really have to do is look up. Well, most of well, us probably have to escape the light pollution of the big cities. And I think so many, especially local astronomy discoveries right now, are probably more from hobbyists than really professional. Uh, there, there are some. I just hear a lot of hobbyists who see things and report it, and things come out of it. Hobbyists do still discover things. Yes. But I, I think that's probably a not the case. Overstatement. Uh, basically, well, the James Webb Space Telescope is new. Yeah. And yeah, basically every week they find the new oldest galaxy. Well, and that's why yeah, I said yeah. locally. Oh, locally, okay, okay, fair enough, okay, fair enough. Because yeah, fair enough. way out there, yeah, yeah. that's like, uh, you know, there's three levels of ham radio, right? Okay. So it's kind of the same. You got those different levels of where yeah. your telescope can go. So yeah. I'm right there with you. Now that's awesome, right. that's awesome. Um, Here's some QR codes, guys, to look at. I'm not on TikTok, uh, unfortunately. Sorry, TikTokers. It's all um, good. We, we go all over the place. That's great. I'm sure a lot there's still the crossover on the socials. Oh, yeah. Um, oh, yeah. This telescope is the ideal starting point. This is called the Hadley Telescope. This is not by design, but this is kind of my take on it. The Hadley is a really popular open source design, and there's a good community around it. They have a Discord server. I have links to that on my website. The great thing about the Hadley is you can build it for relatively inexpensive. The uh, the mirror set you get on Amazon for like 30 bucks. Okay. You'll need eyepieces, and decent eyepieces are 30, 35 dollars or so. Yeah. My design uses a um, a commercial off-the-shelf focuser, and you can get that on AliExpress for like 15 dollars. But the stock Hadley telescope has a 3D printed focuser, so you can print that if you want also. Yeah, there's okay. options. That's awesome. Um, That's awesome. My right. version uses carbon fiber tubes for the truss yeah. structure, partially because it's what I had and they look cool. Um, that's uh, definitely a kind of a premium option. The stock Hadley uses uh, aluminum half-inch tubing, which is okay. going to be cheaper and much more available. Okay, awesome. So you can build the telescope for under $100. And for what it is, it's really capable. If you've never looked through a telescope before, this little thing will blow your mind. Like awesome. you can see detail on the moon, you can see detail in the planets, the moons of Jupiter, the rings of Saturn, okay. things like that with this That's telescope. Great. Really great. And the planets are really bright, so you don't need to be in dark skies to see the planets. Okay. They're they're very bright in the city in the city light pollution of uh, planetary astronomy is super accessible. Yeah. Except awesome. not this time of year because they've gone around to the other <laughs> yeah, side of the yeah, yeah. sun, so they're pretty much up during the yeah. daytime. So it'll be like six months too. Yeah. So you've got time to build your telescope. Yeah, that's awesome. Well, so my contribution to the community is uh, what I call the uh, the mount, which I call the Dave Lee because I'm bad at names. And hey, well, it's um, Dave. That I'm works. Dave. It yeah. works. So. Um, this is mostly 3D printed, and the, the major source you need, or major component you need to source are these large bearings. You can get those on Amazon. Again, they're like 30, 40 bucks. Right. And I have bill of materials uh, on my website and on printables, so you can get info on that. Um, this mount is 
uh, intended for use with a uh, generic off-the-shelf astronomy or photo video tripod that you might already have. Right. So if you have a decently sturdy tripod, this is a good solution. Okay. If you don't, there are other mount options for the Hadley telescope okay. available. Awesome. Well, thank you. So Thank you for sharing all that. I yeah. really appreciate it. All right, guys, if y'all have any questions, let me know. If I see questions, I'll come back and ask them. Uh, uh, right. Absolutely. Thank you, man. You yeah. have a great day. What was your name good again? Asylum Life Makes. Asylum Life Makes. Yep. So have a good day. Okay. See ya. Um, all right, we're going to keep going, keep going. If you have any questions, let me know. Oh, we're down to 12 people. We were doing so good there, but I'm glad for the people who are here. Yeah, we ought to build one of those for Kaylin. I think that would be kind of fun. Don't tell her, though. Don't tell her, though. We should build one and get it to her. A hundred bucks as a community, we could probably make one and get it to her easy. We keep walking through. Everybody knows the Death Racers. We got the, uh-oh, uh-oh. Do uh -oh. y'all know who these people are? Y'all know who these people are, right? Come on, everybody knows Sam. Very worried. How are you doing today? I am nearly losing my voice, yes. um, which is something that happens at these events, unfortunately. <laughs> but some people might say it's a good thing. Um, probably people like my wife. So, right. yes. so yes. good. Yeah. Well, what, are we look what is this contraption we're looking at here? So this is the tiny bike. Sorry, what was that? What was that? This is the um, this is the world's <laughs> first 3D printed, which is printed in Polymaker PLA, foldable e-bike. Foldable. It's foldable. So the idea is this comes out, that comes out, it folds in on itself, and the handlebars also push forward as well. It's printed on the Prusa Excel. Something I'm kind of proud about. Joseph Bruce has just been here as well, and uh, he said it was much faster than he thought it was going to be, uh, which is also what I thought because it is it's a pretty speedy bike. Uh, the incline that you may have seen outside, we managed to go up that early. Oh wow! Um, but this is all 3D printed in PLA. There's no exotic filaments. There's nothing special about this, and um, it's been uh, an experimental version for all we're on at the minute. So a few more tweaks to do, and next week we're releasing the files, which will be on the page. Patreon. And of course, one of the Death Racers as well, which uh, yes, again, a lot of people will be familiar with. Yeah. Uh, big STEM projects going into 2025. So, really excited about all that sort of stuff. But it's great to see you. Yeah, good to see you as well. Um, I love seeing you at these events. It's, say again? I love seeing you at these events. It's always yeah. fun. I, I love coming out to the States and I especially love your pancakes. So, um, so good to see so, you. So, uh, one question Max speed and weight limit. Okay, so weight limit at the moment, the maximum we had on it. Is, uh, the and don't name names. Oh, <laughs> is uh, a polymaker, two polymaker employees, uh, one of a certain size and one of a slightly smaller size, but weighing a to total of 400 pounds, uh, one on each shoulder. Uh, basically, rode this yesterday, so we had 400 pounds on this. Uh, it weighs about 15 kilos, depending on which battery you put in there as well. And the idea is you can fold it up and put it into your bag. I put this in my luggage to come over to the States. So um, it's just a bit of a fun project. So we're just going to kind of see what happens and where it goes. So, Should we yeah. be expecting speeding tickets or are we staying sub 35 miles an hour? I'm expecting someone needs to probably come up with a 3D printed crash helmet because I think somebody is probably going to get injured on it. And okay. if it's not me, then it's going to be someone along the line. That's so, awesome. Okay. Yeah. Well, thank you. It's good to see you. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Thank you. Have a good day. Hey, it's Cookie Cow. We're walking, we're walking. What's up? Yeah, the bots were the biggest, the biggest section. I totally agree. Doom buggy. Uh-oh, uh-oh. This feels like an off-the-grid type RC car. Is that That's what we're right. going for? That's right. Awesome, That's awesome. Right. Yeah. What's this project? So this is designed to go in the no. crawl space under my house. Oh. It's a uh, that is so smart. It's a 3D printed first person view uh, RC vehicle with a pump trailer and a sprayer on the front. By activating this nozzle, you might want to take a step back, but I can activate the sprayer 
and using FPV goggles, you're able to see wherever it's going, that's awesome. and you don't have to keep track yourself. That sounds yourself. like a mold problem. That's it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's it. I used to work for a contractor. I was the guy that had to crawl under the house to get the yeah. I yeah. know what you're doing. That's beautiful. That is beautiful. I don't right like there. crawling. Yeah, I'm with you. I'm with you. That is beautiful. That's awesome. Well, thank you for sharing all that. Yeah, thank and that's you. Doom Buggy, guys. Doom that's Buggy. Doom Buggy. Three three RC. Yeah, YouTube.com at Ludnix, and next weekend I'm going to be driving it under my house with the poison so we can actually see if it works. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, that's so follow awesome. along if you want to see it. Okay, thank you. Yeah, thank Have you. Have a good one. <laughs> All right, keep going. Hey, how are you? Your robot son. This is your robot son? It's your boyfriend's robot son. Oh, okay, you're just okay. I won't, I won't ask questions then. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> the honesty right there. We keep going. Wearable open source, GPT. We keep going. Here's more astrology stuff, science. If you see anything, let me know. I will stop and ask questions. We got more robots right here. I feel like I should go back to the robots. Everybody was enjoying that one. Oh, we got like little ball robots. Oh, no. Oh, is this that? Soccer game with cars. <laughs> That's awesome. That is awesome. All right, stepping in the next room, guys. Here we go. Here we go. I'm running. Oh, there we go. Got some cars in here. Yeah, let me know if y'all see anything. I'm just going to come through. We got a whole Ghostbuster thing going on. Now, this is not... My Ghostbusters. This is like a, a, a Camaro Ghostbuster vehicle versus the standard. I feel like the Ghostbusters have expanded a lot. Yes. And they've really moved into more of a, I don't know, anybody can be a Ghostbuster now. Well, so, there are definitely some uh, uh, criteria. There's some criteria? Yeah. Well, what, to become a Ghostbuster, what are we looking at? Wait can't be afraid of the ghost. Uh, oh, very true, very true. You got me there. I totally agree. That's awesome. So what's this project I'm looking at? Oh, this is the Ecto-B. Ecto-B. Yes, yeah, oh. so essentially uh, uh, what happened about five years ago is we had a crossover between the Ghostbusters and Transformers where the Ectomobile got a spark and became an Ectotron. After uh, battling the ghost of Cybertron, uh, the uh, Ecto-1 went back to New York and became a normal Ectomobile. And we uh, remain on the West Coast here to pick mantle of Ectotron. Oh, okay. okay, that's awesome. That's great. Well, thank you for sharing. I'm going to show you all the stuff here. You have that toy. <laughs> we got somebody here is like, I have that. <laughs> awesome, awesome, awesome. All right, we'll keep going, keep going. I love the, I love the low mile sticker on that. Yep. Lots of cars and stuff. Oh, here's an interesting project over here. Oh, 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 oh. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Hey guys, look. <laughs> Don't check both channels out right now. We're on YouTube. <laughs> Are y'all on YouTube? That's awesome, awesome. All right. Race cars. Oh, now this is the, um, um, shoot. I just lost my brain on this one. This is the yeah, Berkeley. That's what it was. So Berkeley, this is their solar, not solar powered car. This is their battery car. One of those that they test for distance to see how far they can go. This has been really interesting. I love the fact that they're powering it with a Ryobi battery. I mean, come on. And then I have not been over here. I saw them building this earlier. It's like a large keyboard. Are we, I feel, are we programming over here? That is a big keyboard right there, guys. That's awesome. I wonder if it's Bluetooth enabled. Yeah, I think it does work. I mean, it looks like, so we got Notepad, a typing game, send a tweet, Minecraft, Tetris. You want a demo? You want to try it? Sure, let's do a demo. Great. You know, you can hold that microphone if you want. I've oh. got one right here. Oh, okay, perfect. There we go. Awesome. So this is our 16-foot giant keyboard, and it is fully functional. So you can 
Let's see, we're typing. What should so we this, type? It is functional. Let's do, let's do asylum, A-S-Y-L-U-M. Okay. So A. Should we, should we do it on a new line? Sure. Let's do a new so, line. New okay. line. A I'm going to press the A. S. S. Y. Y. I'll let you get that one. L. U. U. M. M. There we go. Asylum. So see, definitely. Now, is it Bluetooth enabled? It is not. Oh, it's it's no. plugged in with a wire. Man, maybe next year. Uh, maybe next year. Maybe next year. A little USB port for a mouse later. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that'd be cool. That'd be cool. Yeah, I don't know. Okay, th th that's the mouse. I feel like there's a there's a, a ratio issue here. But that's awesome. Just a little no, bit. Just a little. But no, thank you for showing that. That's yeah, pretty no awesome. Problem. I love it. Now this is cardboard underneath. I think I saw earlier y'all were using like PVC and. Some... Yeah, here we have a demo key over here. If you want to oh, see, okay. yeah, show the definitely. guts of it. So tilt it up so you can see a little bit. So the, the top is made of cardboard and it is reinforced with wood. Mm -hmm. Last year we just had cardboard, it got totally destroyed. Okay. So and the these are 3D printed parts. 3D printed parts, mm -hmm. PVC pipe, and just a simple limit switch. Mm -hmm. So you can see this 3D printed piece comes down and just activates the limit switch. That is great. That's awesome. Well, thank you so much for sharing. Yeah, That's no great. problem. That's great. Now, do y'all do things like this all the time? Is this a particular channel or something? This, yeah, this is so for our YouTube channel. Arcade. We haven't made videos in a while, but we'll maybe maybe start up again. Okay. Okay. But do you want to check looks... it out? We do we have a built video to show how we made this. Oh, so. okay. Awesome. Well, thank you for sharing. Yeah. Thank you very thank much. Thank you. Yeah. Great afternoon. You too. We'll see ya. And I think that's it, guys. Woo! I think we made it. I think we made it. Let's see, uh, there might be some things. That, oh, these are cool. Let me show you these guys. This was kind of cool. Um, now, they're not working right now. We'll go out to the one outside and see if it's working. I've been talking to uh, one of the owners of this project, but the uh, bird bot, it actually fries chicken. So you pay and w wait, and within three minutes or so, you get fried chicken. I wonder if this is, this is, might be, no, that's not who I'm looking for. Let me see if I can find the guy that I know. I think there's a line outside at the machine outside. Well, thank you. I'm glad. I am glad y'all enjoy this. I enjoy it. It just gets me out, gets me around, and lets me uh, talk with people. Um, I love it. I think it's a lot of fun. I'm trying to see. No. Anyway, so that's the bird bot right there. I'm not seeing the guy I've been talking to. But I think they're waiting. So basically it takes like three minutes, three and a half minutes for it to make fried chicken nuggets for you. And so it's a pretty, pretty cool system. And okay, this machine might be up. Let's see. I'll buy some chicken if it's working. Hey, are we up? Uh, I saw the line out there. I just saw this one on. I didn't know if this one was up. I was, I'm live on TikTok. I was going to show it. But, um, so, okay, no problem, no problem. I'm gonna keep walking around. So guys, this is kind of the refreshment area um, where you can come, you can buy drinks and everything. Restrooms, little lounge area for everybody. Then we can head on down into here. Now there's some breakout sessions, meeting areas for people just to come in and maybe get away. Oh yeah, it's a great machine. The fried chicken's really good, I was surprised. And so I guess some of these are lines for to meet creators. There's a lot of different creators here. Uh, got to talk with Zach Friedman again. I'm, I'm really enjoying getting to know Zach. Zach is a really, really good guy. So here we go with one of the speeches that are going on. Let's see who's on stage. Robot combat through the ages. So, but they've had these going on for both days. And then we're going to step over here. I didn't know these were here. Did not know these were here. Looks like some STEM projects. Oh, an attempt to make a speeder bike. The Jetson. <laughs> Test pilot sign up. I love it. <laughs> That's awesome. That's awesome. Uh, there's no room for my name here. Oh, uh, you can create another spot. 
Create and create, just create another spot? Yeah, go for it. Okay, so we're going to be 17 down here, guys. I'm going to sign up to test pilot this. I'll get the legal paperwork over to you in a few days. Asylum life makes. I always got to put that makes on the end. I forget about that. So we have signed up to test drive. So you'll know I'll show it to you if it happens. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, thank you. Hey, here, here's the QR code, guys. Screen capture it, screen capture it. All right. So maybe one day I'll get to drive a speeder. Who knows? Cat Town, the AI-powered playground for cats. I know there's got to be a cat person in here. What are we doing here? Doing some kind of video scan. Let's see what happens here. I don't know if y'all can really tell what's happening. I'll zoom in a little bit. Oh. So I guess it cut him out. It's a technology for just editing photos. That's what it looks like. Stop that. I like my favorite. Look at that. Look at that bed. And drive your bed around. Oh, I saw this. I saw this the other day. I'm going to stand back here and let y'all watch these patterns. I didn't get to see it running. I was wondering what it was. Just So this is just an art project. These are actually marbles on string. And so the height and everything are being controlled. It's pretty cool. If you stand right here, it looks really good. Porta potty water into root beer. <laughs> okay, I'm uh, sure fried rice. Crush your own penny. I love those machines. Okay, guys, well, I think that's it. I think uh, whew, we're back at the mini golf course. And we're getting about we're about an hour out from what we're going to be doing. People are cutting down on the putt putt. We saw some of this earlier, not all of this. This is kind of the sewing section, the technology sewing section. I feel like as 3D printing develops and does more of this. Electronics and clothing are really, really going to be combined real well. There's that robot that solves the Rubik's Cube. I'm just going to move, move it one. I'm not going to forget your autograph. I'm actually going to do this and walk out back that way as I sign off. <laughs> I just want to see if I can trick it. All right, well, I'm going to sign off, guys. Let me turn this around so y'all can see me a little bit. Whew, my voice is tired. But it's been a really good show. I've had a lot of fun. Thank y'all for teaching me some things because I didn't know a lot about the robots and everything. And, uh, yeah, it was just... I've enjoyed it. It's been a good show. Although I don't know the, understand the purpose of it. You know, most shows have a purpose. Uh, if you look at the Rep Rap Festivals, each one of them has a different personality, and there seems to kind of be a purpose to it. This one is just, I don't know, it's kind of whatever you make of it. Um, you know, I've been asking people for a while, you know, what's this show about? Why do you go to this show? Why is this show important? And um, I think... It's just a bunch of people hanging out, showing off what they're doing. That's, I mean, honestly, that's what it feels like. And everybody encourages each other, and and you know, we just help each other and just learn. 
uh, from what's going on. So it's been really cool. Now, thank you all for being here, uh, for me going through this. I wouldn't do it if you all weren't here. So uh, it's good. It pushes me to get out a little bit and, and talk to everybody. But anyway, you all have a great day. And while I sign off, I'm going to just say, hey, you know, remember to live life to the fullest. Grow in wisdom and share what you've learned generously. Hey, Crystal, there's your last shot right there. All right. Y'all have a great day, guys. Thank you for watching.